Hi everybody, today we're looking at the effect of the hormone glucagon on the blood glucose concentration. So glucagon is produced in the pancreas um, and in the pancreas it's produced in the islets of Langerhan which are found throughout the pancreas, okay, specific tissue throughout the whole pancreas and glucagon is produced in the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhan. If you remember the beta cells are where insulin is produced. So glucagon is produced when blood glucose concentrations decrease. So if we see a decrease in blood glucose, then the alpha cells detect that and the alpha cells will respond to that decrease by producing glucagon, which is released into the blood and then carried away in the bloodstream. At the same time, it's also important to realise that if there's a decrease in blood glucose, the beta cells also detect this and the beta cells will stop the production of insulin. So if we want to look at how glucagon is able to then cause um, an increase again, so it's been produced when there's been a decrease in blood glucose concentration, and the glucagon is released in order to then increase the blood glucose concentration back to that set point, uh, which is what the body wants to achieve. So the way that it does this um, is by acting on liver cells. So here's a very big liver cell. So the liver cell has got um, here a glucagon receptor. And here you can see a molecule of glucagon binding to the receptor. Over here, this is a GLUT2 protein. So this is only liver cells. So we're looking at GLUT2 because um, muscle cells do not respond to glucagon in the same way. They don't have the glucagon receptor. Okay, so when glucagon binds to the receptor on the liver cell, the first thing that happens is it causes a G protein to be activated, and that G protein then in turn activates a membrane enzyme which turns ATP, so uses ATP, um, and it's then converted into cyclic AMP. So this is the starting point of a whole series of reactions which are going to take place in the cell. So the G protein causes the enzyme to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP then starts off by taking um, an enzyme which is inactivated. So this protein kinase enzyme, the red colour represents it being an inactive enzyme, and cyclic AMP activates it. So we now have an activated protein kinase and this enzyme is then going to cause another enzyme called phosphorylase kinase to become activated. So we then get the activated phosphorylase kinase. Now in each of these steps, because we're talking about enzymes, uh, this activated enzyme here isn't just acting on one phosphorylase kinase molecule. The protein kinase will act on many, many, many molecules. So we can have, even if we only had one molecule here, this one molecule would then cause lots of protein kinase molecules to be activated, which would cause even more phosphorylase kinase molecules to be activated. So what we get is an amplification each step. So more and more molecules as we go down become activated. The activated phosphorylase kinase then causes glycogen phosphorylase to become activated. And this final activated glycogen phosphorylase molecule acts on the glycogen molecule itself. So here is glycogen and the activated glycogen phosphorylase, what that does is it removes glucose from the ends and this process is glycogenolysis glycogen and lysis meaning splitting. As I said before, each stage here is what we call an amplification. This is a cascade, okay, so you can think of it a bit like a waterfall coming down and down and down, cascading down. Even though we can only see one glycogen molecule here, in reality the binding of one glucagon up here, because you get the amplification in the enzyme cascade, you would get many, many, many glycogen molecules 
being acted on at once. So we can get a huge amount of glucose being released in a very, very short period of time. Those glucose molecules are then going to, because we, then end, because we end up with so many of them, we then have a very high concentration of glucose within the cell compared to what we have in the blood. Therefore, we've got a concentration gradient and the glucose molecules will therefore diffuse um, out and they'll move through the gluts to transport proteins into the blood, which then increases the blood glucose concentration again. The final thing that happens is that glucagon can cause um, an increase in the process um, of gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is where glucose can be produced using amino acids um, or fatty acids. So it's the production of new glucose that wasn't there before. Um, and that can happen in um, liver cells and muscle cells glucagon causes an increase in gluconeogenesis. Okay, that's all. Thank you.